The first Twitter files of the year exposing more of the company's relationship with America's intelligence community. Journalist Matt Taibbi reporting how the FBI largely twisted Twitter's arm into finding a post-election Russian collusion that simply was not there, causing a, quote, PR crisis in 2017. Now, Twitter eventually evolved into creating its own Russian task force to combat what it deemed to be misinformation. Joining me now, Competitive Enterprise Institute Director um, of Center for Technology technology and innovation, Jessica Malugin. Jessica, good morning to you and, and great to have you on this morning. Um, let me ask you about the significance of this new information we've received. Well, I mean, I think what it shows really is what's the core problem here, right? The core problem isn't the decisions that these private companies make about what they want to show and what they're concerned about. The problem is when the government gets involved in pressuring them to make those decisions when it's not politically advantageous to that administration or that member or that unelected bureaucrat in some cases. Um, really the concern here for Americans should be that government shouldn't be influencing speech on social media platforms. If this happened, you know, if they were contacting the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal like this, we'd be outraged, and there really shouldn't be much difference here. Yeah. Um, these are, you know, these are not dis these are not the sorts of things that these agencies should be involved in. But it, it raises a big question when you see evidence of this that the agencies are in fact doing this, and you wonder, um, you know, they may or may not be doing it um, elsewhere. But you sort of wonder how the boundaries are being broken here in some ways, and it's kind of like it makes you feel like you've got to put the genie back in the bottle, right? Well, that's exactly right. And I'm hopeful that uh, with the new Congress, we'll have some oversight here, we'll have some hearings, we'll have some investigations. And this is a national discussion that needs to happen. Social media is still relatively new to all of us, even though it feels like it's, we can't imagine life without it. It's still something that's new. And those are new boundaries that need to be drawn. We need to go back to first principles here, and we need to keep government out of influencing speech. That's one of the founding principles of this country, and we just need to move those same rock hard principles. Principles yeah. into the digital age. Well, the files also showed that Democratic Congressman elect Adam Schiff attempted to get New York Post columnist Paul Sperry's account suspended. It came after a January 2020 article where he discussed a comment overheard from a Trump whistleblower about how to remove Trump from office. Um, your reaction to Schiff getting involved, he also um, reached out to Twitter uh, with respect to um, accounts that were, you know, potentially harassing some of his staff members as well. So he really was in the weeds on this. Yeah, it's just completely inappropriate, right? I don't think anyone on either side of the aisle wants our elected representatives telling these companies what they can and can't do, because, it, you know, the incentives are too great for self-preservation, right? The incentives to become reelected and to protect yourself as a politician, we all know this. We all know that this is just part of being in Congress, and we have to have safeguards up for that. We count on the press to be a mitigating factor in that, and we should count on social media platforms to ignore these requests. And I think Twitter was resistant. and. and and said to him, you know, we don't do that. And that's what we should be looking for. That's one of the great things about these files coming out, is we can see who's acting correctly as a private company and who's giving into politics. Um, that, that's something we should always be on guard against. One of the most concerning things about one of the Twitter files from late last December to me is this idea that the FBI gave Twitter how many millions of dollars in order to give them information preempt, it seems like, the Hunter Biden laptop story. But, you know, the partisanship of it aside, what can Congress do in the future to make sure the FBI isn't giving private companies money in order to censor speech? Is that something that's in the realm of Congress to curtail? Yeah, I think so, for sure. I mean, Congress, one of the most important things Congress can be doing and should be doing more of, and hopefully will be doing more of, is oversight. Um, this is their responsibility, to make sure that there isn't this sort of tomfoolery going on. Uh, and this is what hopefully we'll see more when, when Congress gets itself settled, uh, whenever that is, and gets to work. This is really important. You know, th this is exactly the sort of thing that has the downstream effect of people losing faith in their institutions. That's terrible. You know, we should be confident in our law enforcement that they're protecting us and enforcing the rule of law and that they're not running around doing these politically motivated things. That's a huge problem that I hope Congress will tackle.
Um, let me switch gears for a moment because this has been a big story, the Amazon layoffs. So they announced job cuts earlier this year. The company said we're going to cut uh, 10,000. Now we're hearing it's 18,000. It's 5% of Amazon's workforce. Um, it's all going to happen in the coming weeks. And it's just one of the many tech giants that we've seen laying people off this year. Wall Street Journal says that tech layoffs are happening at a faster rate than during the pandemic. Um, you know, your outlook for the tech industry in 2023, because not only do I think there are going to be layoffs in tech, um, but that it will spill over into other industries as well with rates on the way up. Yeah, I think that this is kind of a reflection of the macroeconomic situation, right? Interest rates are high, inflation is high, uh, the economy seems to be cooling and slowing. So I think that that sort of macro environment's catching up with even our most successful companies now. Amazon and Salesforce made a similar announcement yesterday. Um, during the pandemic, these were a sliver of the economy that happened to benefit, uh, but now we're seeing corrections there. I think that we're going to see this, as you were saying, ind industry across industry, you're going to see bad news. Yeah. So uh, even the big guys aren't immune. Right. And we've got a big jobs report coming out tomorrow. We got some pre preliminary data um, this morning to set up for it. Um, but, you know, the Fed is going to be watching this data very closely as well um, to make some of its decisions that will set the tone for 2023. Final thoughts, Jessica. I think it's going to be a rough one all around. Um, I, I think the tech industry is not immune. I think that maybe will make Congress think twice about going after these tech companies for antitrust concerns and all of that. The market might be taking care of it faster than they can. Yeah. Um, and hopefully they turn their attention to getting some of these agencies under control. Uh, oversight would be a great agenda for them as they kick off the new year. Yeah, it's, um, it's a fine line that, that you point out there. Jessica Malugin, thank you so much. Great to see you this morning. Thank you.